a Wikivideo Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Coffee Coffee is a brew drink prepared from roasted coffee beans, the seeds of berries from certain coffea species. The genus Coffea is native to tropical Africa and Madagascar, the Comoros, Mauritius, and Réunion in the Indian Ocean. Coffee plants are now cultivated in over 70 countries, primarily in the equatorial regions of the Americas, Southeast Asia, India, and Africa. The two most commonly grown are C. arabica and C. robusta. Once ripe, coffee berries are picked, processed, and dried. Dried coffee seeds are roasted to varying degrees, depending on the desired flavor. Roasted beans are ground and then brewed with near boiling water to produce the beverage known as coffee. Coffee is darkly colored, bitter, slightly acidic and has a stimulating effect in humans, primarily due to its caffeine content. It is one of the most popular drinks in the world, and it can be prepared and presented in a variety of ways. It is usually served hot, although iced coffee is a popular alternative. Clinical studies indicate that moderate coffee consumption has been or mildly beneficial in healthy adults, with continuing research on whether long-term consumption lowers the risk of some diseases, although those long-term studies are of generally poor quality. The earliest credible evidence of coffee drinking appears in Yemen in southern Arabia in the middle of the 15th century in Sufi shrines. It was here in Arabia that coffee seeds were first roasted and brewed in a similar way to how it is now prepared. But the coffee seeds had to be first exported from East Africa to Yemen. As the coffee arabica plant is thought to have been indigenous to the former, Yemeni traders took coffee back to their homeland and began to cultivate the seed. By the 16th century, the drink had reached Persia, Turkey, and North Africa. From there, it spread to Europe and the rest of the world. As of 2016, Brazil was the leading grower of coffee beans, producing one-third of the world total. Coffee is a major export commodity. Being the top legal agricultural export for numerous countries, it is one of the most valuable commodities exported by developing countries. Green Unroasted coffee is one of the most traded agricultural commodities in the world. Some controversy has been associated with coffee cultivation and the way developed countries trade with developing nations, as well as the impact on the environment with regards to the clearing of land for coffee growing and water use. Consequently, the markets for fair trade and organic coffee are expanding. Etymology The word, coffee, entered the English language in 1582 via the Dutch coffee, borrowed from the Ottoman Turkish kava, borrowed in turn from the Arabic kawa. The Arabic word kawa was traditionally held to refer to a type of wine whose etymology is given by Arab lexicographers as deriving from the verb kaya, to lack hunger. In reference to the drink's reputation as an appetite suppressant. It has also been proposed that the source may be the proto-central Semitic root qhh meaning, dark. Alternatively, the word cart, a plant widely used as a stimulant in Yemen and Ethiopia before being supplanted by coffee has been suggested as a possible origin, or the Arabic word qur. It may also come from the Kingdom of Kaffa in southeast Ethiopia where coffee arabica grows wild, but this is considered less likely. In the local Kaffa language, the coffee plant is instead called Bano. The expression, coffee break, was first attested in 1952. The term, coffee pot, dates from 1705. Legendary accounts According to legend, ancestors of today's Aroma people in a region of Kaffa in Ethiopia were believed to have been the first to recognize the energizing effect of the coffee plant. Though no direct evidence has been found indicating where in Africa coffee grew or who among the native populations might have used it as a stimulant or even known about it, earlier than the 17th century. The story of Koldi, the 9th century Ethiopian goat herd who discovered coffee when he noticed how excited his goats became after eating the beans from a coffee plant, did not appear in writing until 1671, and is probably apocryphal. Other accounts attribute the discovery of coffee to Sheikh Omar. According to an ancient chronicle, Omar, who was known for his ability to cure the sick through prayer, was once exiled from Mocha in Yemen to a desert cave near Uzub. Staff 
looking. Omar chewed berries from nearby shrubbery, but found them to be bitter. He tried roasting the seeds to improve the flavor, but they became hard. He then tried boiling them to soften the seed, which resulted in a fragrant brown liquid. Upon drinking the liquid Omar was revitalized and sustained for days. As stories of this miracle drug reached Mocha, Omar was asked to return and was made a saint. From Ethiopia, the coffee plant was introduced into the Arab world through Egypt and Yemen. Historical Transmission the earliest credible evidence of coffee drinking or knowledge of the coffee tree appears in the middle of the 15th century in the accounts of Ahmed al Ghaffar in Yemen. It was here in Arabia that coffee seeds were first roasted and brewed, in a similar way to how it is now prepared. Coffee was used by Sufi circles to stay awake for their religious rituals. Accounts differ on the origin of coffee prior to its appearance in Yemen. One account credits Muhammad ibn Sa'd for bringing the beverage to Aden from the African coast. Other early accounts say Ali ben Omar of the Shadli Sufi order was the first to introduce coffee to Arabia, according to Al Shadi. Ali ben Omar may have encountered coffee during his stay with the Adil king Sadadin's companions in 1401. Famous 16th century Islamic scholar Ibn Hajar al Haytami notes in his writings of a beverage called Kawa developed from a tree in the Zila region. By the 16th century, it had reached the rest of the Middle East, Persia, Turkey, and Northern Africa. The first coffee smuggled out of the Middle East was by Sufi Barbaboudin from Yemen to India in 1670. Before then, all exported coffee was boiled or otherwise sterilized. Portraits of Baba Budan depict him as having smuggled seven coffee seeds by strapping them to his chest. The first plants growing from these smuggled seeds were planted in Mysore. Coffee then spread to Italy, and to the rest of Europe, to Indonesia, and to the Americas. In 1583, Leonhard Rohrwolf, a German physician, gave this description of coffee after returning from a ten-year trip to the Near East, from the Middle East. Coffee spread to Italy. The thriving trade between Venice and North Africa, Egypt, and the Middle East brought many goods, including coffee, to the Venetian port. From Venice, it was introduced to the rest of Europe. Coffee became more widely accepted after it was deemed a Christian beverage by Pope Clement VIII in 1600, despite appeals to ban the Muslim drink. The first European coffee house opened in Rome in 1645. The Dutch East India Company was the first to import coffee on a large scale. The Dutch later grew the crop in Java and Ceylon. The first exports of Indonesian coffee from Java to the Netherlands occurred in 1711. Through the efforts of the British East India Company, coffee became popular in England as well. John Evelyn recorded tasting the drink at Oxford in England in a diary entry of May 1637 to where it had been brought by an Ottoman student of Balliol College from Crete named Nathaniel Conopios of Crete. Oxford's Queen's Lane Coffee House, established in 1654, is still in existence today. Coffee was introduced in France in 1657, and in Austria and Poland after the 1683 Battle of Vienna when coffee was captured from supplies of the defeated Turks, when coffee reached North America during the colonial period. It was initially not as successful as it had been in Europe as alcoholic beverages remained more popular. During the Revolutionary War, the demand for coffee increased so much that dealers had to hoard their scarce supplies and raise prices dramatically. This was also due to the reduced availability of tea from British merchants, and a general resolution among many Americans to avoid drinking tea following the 1773 Boston Tea Party. After the War of 1812, during which Britain temporarily cut off access to tea imports, the Americans' taste for coffee grew. Coffee consumption declined in England, giving way to tea during the 18th century. The latter beverage was simpler to make, and had become cheaper with the British conquest of India and the tea industry there. During the Age of Sail, Seamen aboard ships of the British Royal Navy made substitute coffee by dissolving burnt bread in hot water. The Frenchman Gabriel de Clier took a coffee plant to the French territory of Martinique in the Caribbean, from which much of the world's cultivated Arabica coffee is descended. Coffee thrived in the climate and was conveyed across the Americas. Coffee was cultivated in Saint-Domingue from 1734. 
and by 1788 it supplied half the world's coffee. The conditions that the slaves worked in on coffee plantations were a factor in the soon-to-follow Haitian Revolution. The coffee industry never fully recovered there. It made a brief comeback in 1949 when Haiti was the world's third largest coffee exporter, but fell quickly into rapid decline. Meanwhile, coffee had been introduced to Brazil in 1727. Although its cultivation did not gather momentum until independence in 1822. After this time massive tracts of rainforest were cleared for coffee plantations, first in the vicinity of Rio de Janeiro and later Sao Paulo. Brazil went from having essentially no coffee exports in 1800, to being a significant regional producer in 1830, to being the largest producer in the world by 1852. In 1910-20, Brazil exported around 70% of the world's coffee. Colombia, Guatemala, and Venezuela exported half of the remaining 30%, and Old World production accounted for less than 5% of world exports. Cultivation was taken up by many countries in Central America in the latter half of the 19th century, and almost all involved the large-scale displacement and exploitation of the indigenous people. Harsh conditions led to many uprisings, coups and bloody suppression of peasants. The notable exception was Costa Rica, where lack of ready labor prevented the formation of large farms, smaller farms, and more egalitarian conditions ameliorated unrest over the 19th and 20th centuries. Rapid growth in coffee production in South America during the second half of the 19th century was matched by growth in consumption in developed countries. Though nowhere has this growth been as pronounced as in the United States, where high rate of population growth was compounded by doubling of per capita consumption between 1860 and 1920. Though the United States was not the heaviest coffee-drinking nation at the time, due to its sheer size, it was already the largest consumer of coffee in the world by 1860, and, by 1920, around half of all coffee produced worldwide was consumed in the US. Coffee has become a vital cash crop for many developing countries. Over 100 million people in developing countries have become dependent on coffee as their primary source of income. It has become the primary export and backbone for African countries like Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, and Ethiopia, as well as many Central American countries. Biology Several species of shrub of the genus Coffea produce the berries from which coffee is extracted. The two main species commercially cultivated are Coffea conifera and C. arabica. C. arabica. The most highly regarded species, is native to the southwestern highlands of Ethiopia and the Boma Plateau in southeastern Sudan and possibly Mount Marsabit in northern Kenya. C. conifera is native to western and central sub-Saharan Africa, from Guinea to Uganda and southern Sudan. Less popular species are C. Librica, C. stenophylla, C. Mauritiana, and C. racemosa. All coffee plants are classified in the large family Rubiaceae. They are evergreen shrubs or trees that may grow 5 meters tall when unpruned. The leaves are dark green and glossy, usually 10-15 cm long and 6 cm wide, simple, entire, and opposite. Petioles of opposite leaves fuse at the base to form interpetiolar stipules, characteristic of Rubiaceae. The flowers are axillary, and clusters of fragrant white flowers bloom simultaneously. Gynetium consists of an inferior ovary, also characteristic of Rubiaceae. The flowers are followed by oval berries of about 1.5 cm. When immature they are green, and they ripen to yellow, then crimson. Before turning black on drying, each berry usually contains two seeds, but 5-10% of the berries have only one. These are called pea berries. Arabica berries ripen in 6-8 to eight months, while Robusta takes 9-11 to 11 months. Coffea arabica is predominantly self-pollinating, and as a result, the seedlings are generally uniform and vary little from their parents. In contrast, Coffea conifera, and C. Librica are self-incompatible and require outcrossing. This means that useful forms and hybrids must be propagated vegetatively. Cuttings, grafting, and budding are the usual methods of vegetative propagation. On the other hand, there is great scope for experimentation in search of potential new strains. 
In 2016, Oregon State University entomologist George Poynar Jr. announced the discovery of a new plant species that's a 45 million year old relative of coffee found in amber, named Strychnos electri, after the Greek word for amber. The flowers represent the first ever fossils of an asterid, which is a clade of flowering plants that not only later gave us coffee, but also sunflowers, peppers, potatoes, mint and deadly poisons. Cultivation The traditional method of planting coffee is to place 20 seeds in each hole at the beginning of the rainy season. This method loses about 50% of the seeds potential, as about half fail to sprout. A more effective method of growing coffee, used in Brazil, is to raise seedlings in nurseries that are then planted outside at 6 to 12 months. Coffee is often intercropped with food crops, such as corn, beans, or ice during the first few years of cultivation as farmers become familiar with its requirements. Coffee plants grow within a defined area between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, termed the bean belt or coffee belt. Of the two main species grown, Arabica coffee is generally more highly regarded than Robusta coffee. Robusta tends to be bitter and have less flavor, but better body than Arabica. For these reasons, about three quarters of coffee cultivated worldwide is Sea Arabica. Robusta strains also contain about 40-50% more caffeine than Arabica. Consequently, this species is used as an inexpensive substitute for Arabica in many commercial coffee blends. Good quality Robusta beans are used in traditional Italian espresso blends to provide a full-bodied taste and a better foam head. Additionally, Coffea conifera is less susceptible to disease than C. arabica and can be cultivated in lower altitudes and warmer climates where C. arabica will not thrive. The Robusta strain was first collected in 1890 from the Lomani River, a tributary of the Congo River, and was conveyed from the Congo Free State to Brussels to Java around 1900. From Java, further breeding resulted in the establishment of Robusta plantations in many countries. In particular, the spread of the devastating coffee leaf rust, to which C. arabica is vulnerable, hastened the uptake of the resistant Robusta. Hemolea vestatrix is a fungal pathogen and results in light, rust-colored spots on the undersides of coffee plant leaves. Hemolea vestatrix grows exclusively on the leaves of coffee pants. Coffee leaf rust is found in virtually all countries that produce coffee. Mycena citricola is another threat to coffee plants primarily in Latin America. Mycena citricola, commonly referred to as American leaf spot, is a fungus that can affect the whole coffee plant. It can grow on leaves, resulting in leaves with holes that often fall from the plant. Over 900 species of insect have been recorded as pests of coffee crops worldwide. Of these, over a third are beetles, and over a quarter are bugs. Some 20 species of nematodes, 9 species of mites, and several snails and slugs also attack the crop. Birds and rodents sometimes eat coffee berries, but their impact is minor compared to invertebrates. In general, Arabica is the more sensitive species to invertebrate predation overall. Each part of the coffee plant is assailed by different animals. Nematodes attack the roots, coffee borer beetles burrow into stems and woody material and the foliage is attacked by over 100 species of larvae of butterflies and moths. Mass spraying of insecticides has often proven disastrous, as predators of the pests are more sensitive than the pests themselves. Instead, integrated pest management has developed, using techniques such as targeted treatment of pest outbreaks, and managing crop environment away from conditions favoring pests. Branches infested with scale are often cut and left on the ground, which promotes scale parasites to not only attack the scale on the fallen branches, but in the plant as well. The 2 mm long coffee borer beetle is the most damaging insect pest to the world's coffee industry, destroying up to 50% or more of the coffee berries on plantations in most coffee-producing countries. The adult female beetle nibbles a single tiny hole in a coffee berry and lays 35 to 50 eggs. Inside, the offspring grow, mate, and then emerge from the commercially ruined berry to disperse, repeating the cycle. Pesticides are mostly ineffective, because the beetle juveniles are protected inside the berry nurseries, 
but they are vulnerable to predation by birds when they emerge, when groves of trees are nearby. The American yellow warbler, Rufus capped warbler, and other insectivorous birds have been shown to reduce by 50% the number of coffee berry borers in Costa Rica coffee plantations. Beans from different countries or regions can usually be distinguished by differences in flavor, aroma, body, and acidity. These taste characteristics are dependent not only on the coffee's growing region, but also on genetic subspecies and processing. Varietals are generally known by the region in which they are grown, such as Colombian, Java, and Kona. Arabica coffee beans are cultivated mainly in Latin America, Eastern Africa or Asia. While robusta beans are grown in Central Africa, throughout Southeast Asia, and Brazil. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?